She reviewed it for four months. All my blackouts. She said, "Be the best chat pros you can be." Damn straight, Dana. Sure. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Where's the closest restroom at? The left of the, the curtain. Left of the, the curtain. Yep. Perfect. Four ways. Today we have a hand at 25, 50, 100, no limit Texas variety at Hustler Casino Live featuring the man, the myth, the legend, Chris Moneymaker. In this hand, under the gun plus one with ace, king, offsuit. Debrail calls under the gun plus two with his $9,000 stack with jack, 10 offsuit. This is definitely too loose. I know a lot of people think that connectors are good cards, but you're going to find that hands like king, 10 offsuit, Queen 10 offsuit, Jack 10 offsuit, 10 9 offsuit. These are not good hands from early position. You just have to fold. But whatever. Jabril calls. Over around two, Chris Moneymaker in the small blind playing $25,000 deep. So 250 big blinds deep. He opts to call with the Queen 10 offsuit. I think this is a better call than the Jack 10 offsuit call, but I think I would still just fold it because when you're playing a game with three blinds, you have to be very cautious in the smallest blind because instead of only one player, you had to act two could three bet. Now there are two. Also, if either of the players yet to act call, you are now going to have a very, very awful position after the flop because on the flop, you're always going to check or almost always going to check. The big blind's almost always going to check and or straddle. Someone's going to bet and then it's back to you and you have to act before the big blind and or straddle. And that's a really bad spot to be in. So I think I would just fold out this Queen 10 offsuit, but whatever, Chris Moneymaker can do whatever he wants. Over around to Johnny Vibes, world-class cash game player and video blogger. He opts to call with the ace, five of hearts. We see the flop three three ways, not three ways, four ways. I'm not gonna be a real man today, I don't think. Moneymaker open-ended. Grail's got top pair. Rob has whiffed with 500. Big Slick. Think Three we'll of us, four of us. Heads up, heading to the turn. Moneymaker and Jabrail. Buy in or how much do I have? I have like a eight uh, grand. You look a troll. I'm not everybody. sure what Rob's doing here. Look at his guns, Rob. He's not folding to this nonsense. You know you want to squeeze. Oh, just puts him a call. The clock comes. Jack of hearts, nine of clubs, four of diamonds. Everyone checks around to Jabrail, who bets $500 with his top pair bad kicker, which is perfectly reasonable. In multi-white pots, you do not want to bet too large, because when you bet very large, that essentially implies you have a range or nut advantage, and very multi-way, that will almost never be the case. So you usually want to bet using a smallish size, which Jabrail does. Fine and good. This hand may actually want to just check it back, but whatever, betting's fine. Over around to Chris Moneymaker in the small blind. He can either raise or call. I think both plays are reasonable. But notice the stack to pot ratio here. If Chris Moneymaker raises to something like $1,500 or $1,800, Jabril could conceivably just rip it all in and then Moneymaker would have to fold out his open-ended straight draw, which would be a disaster. So when that's the case, you usually want to just call. So he does call. Johnny Vibes opts to splash around as well. He's getting really good pot odds, but the problem here is that even if he spikes an ace, it may not be good. So he's really only drawing to the backdoor flush draw. So I would have let this one go, but whatever. Johnny Vibes flashes around. And then Rob with ace king ops to call two. I realize he's getting good pot odds closing the action, but I think this is one of these spots where he's going to be super dominated. He's going to be against a hand like ace jack a lot, maybe ace nine a lot, in which case the ace is no good. He's going to be against king jack, queen 10 a lot in which case the king is no good. And when you're against a lot of callers, these outs that normally look reasonable, like top pair, top kicker, become way less reasonable and that you start to have very big reverse implied odds, even though you're getting really good immediate pot odds. So I think I would have just let the ace king go, but he splashes round two, as they are known to do at Hustler Casino Live. Let's go to the turn. 
That's the nuts for that man. The world champion. The turn is the eight of spades. Chris Moneymaker makes the nuts. Does he lead? No, he's tricky and trappy. He opts to check. Johnny vibes with nothing. Checks. Rob with nothing. Checks. Jabrell. Top pair and straight draw. Pretty good hand. His problem, though, again, is stack to pot ratio. If he bets any amount out of his $8,000 stack into this $3,300 pot and gets raised, he can't really fold. And now he's putting it in in a lot of spots where he's going to be in pretty rough shape against two pair or sets or straights. So even though Jabrell does have the best hand a lot of the time, not this time, but a lot of the time, this is a spot where he definitely wants to check it back and just try to see a somewhat cheap showdown, which is exactly what he does. Let's go to the river. And he's going to cooler his buddy Jabrail, who makes runner runner straight that's no good. Chris Moneymaker has the nuts on a four straight board. In this spot, you always want to consider how my opponents respond with various portions of their range if I check or if I bet. If we bet on the river with the nuts, as most people would do, if your opponent has nothing, they're always going to fold. They're never going to bluff you. If they have one pair, two pair, three of a kind, they're probably just going to fold, although maybe they find a hero call if they have a set. Maybe two pair. If they have a 10, they're always going to call. Okay, fine. What about if you check? If you check and they have nothing, they may decide to run a super optimistic bluff, which is good because now you would get value from those hands that you would not get value from if you instead opt to bet. If they have a bluff catcher like a set, two pair, or one pair, they're just going to check it back. So you may lose a little bit of value against those, but even then, those hands should almost certainly just fold to a bet in the spot because if Chris Moneymaker bets into three players, all of whom could have a 10, he probably has a pretty good hand, right? So you're not so concerned with those hands. What, about, what happens when your opponent has a 10, though? If they have a 10, they're always going to bet for value. So if they bet for value, you can then put in a raise. So instead of just getting a $2,000 or $3,000 or $5,000 bet in on the river against a 10, now Chris Moneymaker can check. His opponent will bet two, three, or $5,000. Then you can raise and you can get a lot of money in. So this is an excellent spot to check, as Chris Moneymaker does. Let's see how this hand proceeds. Okay. Vibes is thinking, why the hell did I leave Las Vegas for L.A.? Rob has no play here. He's going to punt. Good for you, Rob. 2200 This is a hell of a punt. Johnny Vibes has to figure out if he should bluff or not, and he decides not to. The reason is because in this scenario, it is very likely that someone has a 10 or 2 pair or a set, because consider the action that's gone down so far, right? We had a pre-flop raise, a call, a call, and a call. They probably have decent ranges. Fine. On the flop, there was a bet and a call and a call and a call, even though it was a tiny bet, which means someone in this hand's going to have something that interacts with this board. So what interacts with jack, nine, four? Well, hands containing a jack or a nine. Which hands contain a jack or a nine? Well, ace, jack, king, jack, queen, jack, jack, 10, jack, nine, jack, eight, jack, seven suited, right? 10, nine, 10, nine, nine, seven, right? Th these hands all connect with this board. So I don't think this is a great spot to bluff. It's just so likely that someone has a 10 to the point that I would just be done with it. I mean, yeah, you need to find some bluff some portion of the time, but especially in loose, splashy cash games where players are just not folding all that often with perhaps even two pair in this scenario if you make a river bet, you just got to get out of the way when you don't have anything. So Johnny Vibe checks. He gives up. Rob, however, decides not to give up. He decides to go for $2,200 also with his really trash hand. Now look, when would I make a bluff in this spot? I would make a bluff in this spot if I got the vibe that my opponents, all of them, really were done with it. And I mean, from what I can tell, I mean, again, I'm watching video footage here. It's not like I was here in real life. I don't really get the vibe that Chris Moneymaker or Jabril are giving off all that many tells. And they're sitting here with the nuts, right? Or the effective nuts. So... Unless you can just like look and tell your opponents to know. Like imagine Jabril sitting there and the river comes and he's like, all right. And he just starts like watching football on TV or something. And you know, that's a legitimate tell. In that case, okay, he's done with the hand. 
Now, maybe you think Chris Moneymaker would always bet with a 10 for whatever reason. Again, that's clearly not accurate, but say you thought that. Okay, now you can remove those from his range. Johnny Vibes would probably bet with his 10, so now it becomes a reasonable spot to bluff. But without any decently clear reads like that, just be done with it. Just be done with it. Whatever, though. Rob goes for the bet. Let's see how Jabrail proceeds in this <laughs> detrimentally bad scenario for him. No one has a straight, it works. Unfortunately, Jabrail's got one, and your buddy Chris Moneymaker has a bigger one. Jabrail makes what I think is a very good call, because if he raises, no one yet to act is going to fold a 10 for his... $8,000 stack. They're always going to call, I presume. I could be wrong about that, but I presume they're always going to call. And if you just call here, especially if you hem and haw a little bit and you're like, oh, you know, like maybe they, maybe you can make your opponents think you have two pair, they may actually decide to bluff you. And the neat thing about this spot is that Jabrail is so shallow after calling the $2,000 bet to the point that he can just easily call it off if he gets jammed on. So this is a spot where I like just calling. I also think that if Rob is bluffing, as he is, and you shove, he's literally never going to call without a straight, right? I mean, maybe he finds a call with a set, but probably not. I mean, who knows what's going to happen, but I doubt it. So, I love the call by Jabrail. Let's see what Moneymaker does. Bump it up. Ten large. Rob's feeling like Sammy Farha right about now. Moneymaker pretty quickly makes it 10K. Look, I like the idea of making it a number with a 10 to try to make your opponents think that you have a 10 and maybe they're chopping. Maybe they'll read into that. I think Moneymaker did this like a little bit quickly and confidently. I don't know. This is one of these spots where it's just so impossible for you to be bluffing <laughs> because on the river, Rob announced, I probably have something pretty good. Jabrail clearly announced I have something good because he knows he has to win this pot at the showdown. So look, this is a spot where no, almost no one's ever bluffing. And... Hard to get, hard to get action unless you are against exactly a 10. So whatever, Moneymaker raises. Back around to Jabrail. He is doomed. Let's see if we can find the heroic, heroic fold. Getting punked by Moneymaker. I don't see any way Jabrail gets away from this. Doesn't love it. You really got queen 10, man. Gonna pay it. I know you don't. Interesting table talk here. You know what I have. Everybody knows what I have. Yep. Question is what you got. I don't think you're in a position to bluff, but I'm a degenerate gambler. <clears throat> And that's why we love you, Jabril. <laughs> and I got a steak waiting for me there. I'll call. I'll show it to call. me. Nice, Sam. Stand it. Yeah. Very savvy money. check. I'm going to eat. I'll be right back. Right. On the river. That money maker. I made it down below. Got his huh? buddy to punt off a little bit. Below. Yeah, Trap you did. It's all right. Jabril. And we'll happen again. He'll be back Good soon. Hi, thanks. I have no clue why. I've done After a bit of thought, Jabril makes a call, and you certainly can't fault him. It is an annoying spot because as he even says, you know what I have because <laughs> he called the $2,200 river bet and you're still shoving. So either you have a 10 or you have queen 10. And despite that, I think he just has to find the call. It's an annoying scenario. And unless you know Moneymaker will literally never bluff and literally infrequently raise with a naked 10, I think you just got to pay. It's going to make that steak taste a little bit worse though. Tough spot for him, and I really don't think there's much he could do to avoid that one. As all of you know, Chris Moneymaker was responsible for the poker boom a long time ago in 2003. Some of you were just little babies back then. This year, the World Series of Poker main event was the biggest ever with 10,043 players. I was one of them. I did not win. It's been said that this might be the start of a brand new poker boom. So what I want to know is what do you think are the reasons for such big growth in the main event, or perhaps poker in general. Take a second, think about it, 
before you end this video, let me know in the comment section down below. Go ahead, do it. I'll wait for you. I appreciate it. That's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed this video, click the like and subscribe button down below. And also, we have another video lined up for you where there's a savage full house versus full house cooler. It's brutal when you get cooler. Hope you don't get cooler in your games. Good luck. Have fun. And I hope you run hot as the sun.